Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and I've recently found myself playing a lot of Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. I thoroughly enjoyed this title and figured to myself, well, I may as well take a crack at analyzing it a bit deeper, as I tend to do on this channel. One of the ideals I wanted to analyze really was the police chase system. How does heat work, and what details can the code tell us about it? So that's what I'll be covering in today's video. Slight spoiler warning regarding enemy types, so if you haven't finished the mall yet, I'd advise waiting. Also, really, if you haven't finished the game yet, what are you doing? The game is peak, please go finish it. The story, the gameplay, it's, it's just amazing. I highly suggest you give it your time. But with no more delay, let's just get right into this. To start, I accessed the code for this information using Unity Explorer. This is a mod that basically lets you peek under the hood in Unity games. Peeking into the game's source code, you can find an asset that handles enemies, the police, and really all the juicy stuff that I'll be covering in today's video. There is a lot going on in there, but primarily the thing to take of note is a list that details the amount of crime required to get to different levels. Now, what are crimes? Luckily, the code also tells us this. The crimes include vandalism in small, medium, large, and extra large, entering restricted areas, assaulting an officer, downing an officer, or jostling pedestrians. I should note here that each of these crimes have different values for how much crime is generated by them. The exact values for which I personally don't know. But jostling pedestrians, for example, does very, very little, since I sprinted around and jostled 100 of them, and I got zero stars. So you don't worry about that crime. Other crimes, like big and small vandalism, will you do once or twice, and it will give you one star. So they're clearly on a scale of some sort. Why I don't have numbers for exactly how much they all are is because I tried to get numbers through testing and through the code, and I really couldn't get anything solid, and I'd be doing a disservice to y'all if I came out here with some imaginary number that I think is accurate. Like, I'd be like, hey, small vandalism seems to be three crime from my tests. But I'm not positive on that number, and I'd rather not lie to y'all. So I'm just not going to go through the numbers. So how much crime do you need for each star level, then? Well, to set up the surveillance, you need 9 crime. This then goes to 11 crime for level 1, that's 1 star, 35 crime for level 2, 60 for level 3, 126 for level 4, 198 for level 5, and 250 for level 6. This sounds like a lot, and anyone who's gotten to level 6 knows at times it can be, but peeking into the code showcases it's a tiny bit simpler than that. Levels 4 and 5 both have a 2 times multiplier in crime. What well, this means is that instead of taking 198 crime to get to level 5, it only takes 162. And for level 6, it only takes 188. So to review, it takes 2 crime to get from alerted to level 1, 24 crime from level 1 to level 2, 25 crime to get to level 3, 66 more crime to get to level 4, 36 more from there to level 5, 26 more from there to level 6, meaning the largest gap between traditional levels is from levels 3 and 4, which is from armored units to snipers. Now I said traditional levels for a reason. Anyone who's been paying attention to the graph would notice there's a 7 star level, yet the max in game is 6, is it not? On well, the code there is actually a marked 7th level. This is what I'm assuming is the max crime you can get, and to get there you need to have 300 crimes. That is a lot of crime. It means you need to get to level 6 where there's walkers and all sorts of insanity attacking you and manage to get 50 more crime. This crime, by the way, has no bonus multipliers like earlier levels. Even if you could get this much crime, I'm going to be honest and I really doubt that it is possible to get 7 stars. I say this for two reasons. One, I tried. In the background footage, you can see me trying my best to get 7 stars, I was unable to, despite constantly attacking the police, which are some of the best ways to get crime I've found, destroying walkers, and destroying helicopters, which again, are some of the best ways to get crime. 2. There is a built-in method in the code that limits your max level. This method usually is used at the start of the game, for example, you can't get 4 stars right out of the bat of the game, and get sniped out by the snipers right upon starting the game. However, I assume at the end of the game, this is just used for level 7, and it prevents further escalation of the police force against you. I also also note that I doubt level 7 would be any different than level 6. Level 6 already deploys basically as many units and as many unit types that can be spawned in against you as it can. It really shows this more than 
just playing it. If you play level 6, it's insane how many units are spawned. If there were any more units than this, it would likely cause lag or just not be enjoyable, so I doubt the devs really set up this stage to go any further. Also, to note, for cutscenes to transition in between levels, there are cutscenes for the first 6 levels, but there isn't one for level 7. So I really just don't think it's possible to get 7 stars, even though it's in the code. There might be a way to disable some blockers to enable 7 stars, but I also don't think it would be any different than 6 stars, so I don't think it would be worth it, and I just think it's sadly something that we can't get. Regardless, I thought it was interesting to look at, interesting to learn exactly how the code is working here, what's going on with it, and I figured this data would interest at least some of you. I'm going to leave my footage up now to showcase my fight against 6 stars. I used keyboard for this as somebody who played the game on controller. Uh, I make a lot of mistakes here and there, but hopefully you enjoyed my background footage and enjoyed the information I presented. I plan on making more videos about Bomb Rush, both about the code as well as about the lore and game, so if you'd like to see that, please subscribe. It helps the channel and it keeps you notified. If you'd like to communicate with me in a less formal setting than YouTube comments, which sometimes can be pretty slow to reply to, though I do try my best to reply to everyone, my Discord is linked below, and I'm pretty active on that. But that's all I've got for y'all today. Until next time, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao. Yeah. Ooh.